Well, hello everyone. Uh, we hope everybody has been having a good week. Uh, we're having a good week. Uh, Joe's having an excellent week in uh, the school and the training. Uh, so there ain't much more we could ask for, but uh, there is something. And that is in the form of sparring partners. It looks like we lost another one. Uh, give you a little logist about about this and what I think happened. Uh, I think that the guy that came in last week for us uh, was down in league boxing, and here all the competitive amateur boxing uh, is league supported so this city's got a league a city over there has a league and uh, a lot of towns and cities and in the states they have leagues and uh, if there's not a league in your town you can go to the nearest big town and compete when they have competitions with those guys. But you have to get sponsored uh, by a league. And so, and it, you know, when you, when you have things like that that are government sponsored, there's a lot of corruption in there. So, I try to briefly tell the story of this town that we're in. When we got here, uh, I called the trainer that is over this league in this town. This town has one. And uh, got to talking to him. I said, you know, I want to get my son down here. Great, great. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, this is how much it'll uh, cost per month and blah, blah, blah. And this is when we train and yada, yada, yada. So by the time of me calling the day before and the next day when we went, uh, that evening, this trainer starts talking about uh, Joe, this gringo kid, to the rest of the guys, and they know who, who he was. Uh, the boys knew who he was. And uh, now you'd be hard pressed in Columbia to go anywhere in, in the boxing related and them not know who Joe is right off the bat. But uh, <clears throat> this was a year or so ago and that next day when we went when I got in there the guy was trying to do everything he could to not have Joe in there and you know you quickly start to find out through reasoning and interactions with others what a deal is and this little pipsqueak uh, which you take one look at him you can tell you know him and combat sport aren't mixable uh, but he was very highly nervous when he found out who Joe was uh, and me that we would come in and just take over the box and uh, maybe he loses a job maybe, maybe the mayor and uh, the athletic director would see that we know a lot more than what he knows which basically consists of uh, well I don't want to go into it but it's no in no way, shape, or form as rigorous or uh, 
Uh, it's just not in our league. I, I'll just leave that at that. And uh, instead of saying, come on, and, you know, maybe you can help us in some ways and stuff like that, the guy uh, in my presence offended Joe. He's like, well, your son don't know this. I, I looked at your son, and uh, he don't know that. And I said, and I told him, I said, you only see what I show you. Uh, but I knew his deal. I, I mean, I knew the jealousy thing because we'd been through it before. Uh, so I told the guy, I said, well, this evening, take up four, three, five of your best guys. I said, three, four, five of your best guys. And uh, put them up against Joe in uh, two-minute rounds. And when Joe's done with one, you put a fresh one in. And rotate it around. And he didn't even know what that was. That was completely foreign to him. The shark tank process was just completely foreign to him. And, uh, but as soon as I mentioned that, you know, uh, we'll show you. We'll show you what we do. Uh, he wanted to start talking about brain damage and, uh, it would be unsafe to have Joe around his guys um, in the boxing room. So we left and discussed. There was some more said and a lot more, but I don't want to go into it. A lot of you think I'm a lot meaner than I actually am, and I'm really not that mean. I just got a line and, you know, I try to walk like a man, and it's difficult to do in this world today. And it uh, creates a lot of havoc. Uh, every man walking is going to have havoc around him because he's not going to accept the normality of this world today. So, all right. So, we had a few people. We, we've had people. We got people now that train with us, but we ain't got anybody that's no, nowhere near Joe's size. And uh, uh, we don't have any competition. So I had this guy. I think I had him for one week. And I told him, I said, you should... Uh, because I'm still steering people to this league boxing. But I told the guy, uh, I worked with him, and, uh, well, he quit coming. And I seen him a little later, and I told him, I said, you should go to league boxing down the road here, because uh, it's not far from here at all. And uh, hook up with those guys. You'll have... Uh, You'll be able to spar with people that are closer to your level, and maybe you'll learn some stuff. And so I'm still not downing the league boxing, per se, or that guy. It's just that guy's young and dumb and hasn't come to the realization yet that when somebody may know more than you do or come at something with a different viewpoint, and especially when they're filled with gray hairs showing years of wisdom and knowledge, maybe you need to beg them to come on. <laughs> uh, that's what I would have done as a young man. I would have been, come on, old fellow, I need you. But uh, today, a bit of selfishness, insecurity, uh, you know, these guys claim they want to help kids, but the reality is, is, they're looking for something inward to fulfill. Uh, that being said, if it cross up in your mind, well, man, you're looking for something inward to fulfill with your son. Yeah. You better believe it. That's a little different. That's my son. I'm not taking your kid over here and trying to do that with your kid. And there's a hundred different reasons that you're probably not aware of. 
that I do vicariously live through Joe a lot. Uh, uh, he's better than me, and uh, I'll put a, another video out explaining my father dying when I was a little boy, and the Lord giving me Joe, whom looks and acts and talks just like my, my dad. So, uh, but that's for another time. So I believe what the, what happened was the the guy went down to the league boxing because he said he had been in bo in a boxing school, but he didn't tell me where. So that led me to believe that he was down the street at the league boxing. And here's what I truly believe has happened. And you know how guys are. They'll come forward. You'll end up finding out, you know, what the deal is. But I believe what he did was went down there and became the best one they have. And I think he came up uh, with us uh, last week and uh, thought he was going to lay something on Joe and completely got his ass handed to him, even though he's a lot bigger uh, and taller with a lot more reach and has been down there to sleep, see? So you got to be careful as people thinking you know uh, what's, what's going on or thinking, well, the guy over here that's training me and, and my group of guys were the best. Be looking out there. But we're looking every day. Uh, trust me on that. We walk in boldness around here. But uh, what I tell you, we can, anything I tell you about Joe and his capabilities are my capabilities assisting him. Uh, you best be sure we can back it up 100%. We're not whistling Dixie up in around here. Uh, we're uh, we're doing. When I tell you we're more extreme, we're out working everybody else. I mean that. Uh, I'm not on here lying to you. Got no need to. Uh, so anyway, we're back at square one. No sparring partners. So I, you know, I said I was going to do this before, but I made a very, very conscious decision to go down and talk to the athletic director here. Uh, I'm going to ask for audience with him and the mayor at the same time. Uh, with the boys, and now they're some 20 years old, but they're boxing amateur, but they're boys to me. Uh, with the boys he's got down there, uh, if they'd give me, if they, if I would have been in there six months ago, we would have two or three representatives in the Olympics, uh, for Columbia. And they, and here's the thing, the trainer that's down there, because I'm not going to get involved with that, the trainer that's down there could have went with them boys to Bogota and uh, got the slots to represent Colombia in the Olympics. And this stupid city down here with this idiot uh, insecure trainer, they got zero. As a matter of fact, they can't even beat the team, the, uh, city team next to any of any of the city teams around them. Uh, and that ain't saying much if they did, uh, if they were beating all the city teams around them. But uh, because they all suck, they're all no good. Uh, it's almost like a guy gets on the internet he learns boxing on the internet, yet he doesn't spar himself, hasn't sparred himself, hasn't competed himself. Uh, 
or maybe he's competed a little bit and sparred a little bit, and then he all of a sudden thinks he knows everything. He's got a few dollars to rub together, uh, and he opens a boxing gym. You know, and he's picking up. Now, I'm not down in the picking up things online because I pick up things a lot online. Uh, you got to, uh, I know who I am, and I'm secure in who I am and what I know, and uh, I love learning something new every day. And I believe part of being a man is being able to learn and pick up on uh, things that will help you instead of closing these things off. Uh, through being insecure and it's unmanly to be that way and uh, I'm not telling you I think it's unmanly to be that way I'm telling you it is unmanly to be that way so we take take anything and uh, somebody comes along they're uh, way better than me or this much better than me I'm gonna say Joe you got to give this this man a chance uh, and that day will come. That day will certainly come. And uh, I'll get in the background at that point. But uh, we're, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to have a thorough talk with the mayor and with the athletic director. They got a big football complex down the street. And in that, they do other types of sports because it's a big building and then a big uh soccer field and a uh, big place they they have put a lot of money into that sport complex and uh sad thing is they've brought a bunch of uh macho latinos in there which is all the only thing you can find but they found macho latinos that are too proud and uh don't want anybody better to come in. Don't want anybody with a different perspective to come in. Uh, they're just grabbing on and holding on to their jobs and running every others off. Uh, and Joe's not the first guy that's went down there that uh, uh, went through the process that we went, went through. Uh, it's happened to others because they don't want a very good guy to come in there because the other kids will be looking at the, the new guy coming in and say, hey, where'd you learn all this at? And then they'll be looking at the, get the trainer and they'll be saying, why ain't he trained that? See, so it's just a sorry sack of feces and, uh, I, I intend on telling the mayor and the athletic director that. And truth be told, uh, if the mayor would just make me the athletic director, I'd do it free. And uh, all sports in this area uh, would shoot up. I'd try to get the best and the brightest in there. And... Uh, and let them do their thing, you know. You know, it'd be like me getting online and trying to learn soccer, and me all of a sudden claiming to be a soccer coach. <laughs> I can claim it all day long. I can get out there and do some things with the kids, but I'm no soccer coach. Uh, didn't play the sport, didn't compete in the sport, and uh, I'd be lousy at... Uh, coaching soccer uh, at least the technical part of it I think I'd be great coaching anything uh, you know Vince Lombardi coached basketball one year when a basketball coach quit and took the basketball coach and won the state championship so there's a lot a lot in motivation and how you do and, uh, other things involved but uh, boxing's a different a different species and you can't just claim all this and go in and be running a boxing program and you just it doesn't work that way 
And uh, I know this is happening more frequently in the United States uh, as well. So I'm sure it's happening throughout Western Europe as well. Probably all over the world. But uh, we're going to do that. We just simply can't get sparring partners. You know, I put an ad up. I offer. I call down to. There's a big MMA uh, gym in the city next door to us and here in Columbia. You know, international MMA. And they do have guys that go off and compete. But they they don't want to come spar Joe. And uh, I don't blame them. I mean, if you're going to come spar Joe, it's just not a... If you know him or know of him, uh, you know, it, here, here's the deal. It sounds okay as long as it's next week or uh, 10 days from now. But when, when it gets to the day before and the day that you got to do it, these guys, boys and men, uh, it's nerve wracking. And I understand that, but you got to, these boys and young men need to stand up and uh, you, you can't win in this sport if you too scared to spar a 15 year old kid. You know, you just can't do it. When a kid hits, you gonna get in there with somebody that hits hard. You know, well, he looks me. You gonna get in there with somebody that's gonna look me. Well, he's intimidating. You're gonna be in a ring with somebody that's going to be intimidating the crap out of you. Those are hurdles that you have to overcome. And jo Joe's had to go through them. Uh, first, uh, when Joe was first boxing, uh, I set a bag up at the house and got him a pair of gloves, and he started hitting the bag. And uh, I think he was... 11 or 12 then and uh earlier i had other bags for him but he just play around with them you know more infant type or more younger kid type bags and stuff but uh we started getting serious it was around 12 and he started really getting on that bag and he's like dad i want to really get into this and so we got into it and we went down to a uh MMA gym uh, it was in a town we've lived in a bunch of towns here but it was in a town that we lived in uh, at that time and uh, Joe was always a big boy and uh, you know he grew very quickly early and we went in and a guy laid it all over on Joe I laid it on, and I, I told when, when we first went out, I said, I want to see what my kids got, and then you get to see what you got to work with. That's what I told the guy. I said, we get to see what we got to work with. And he put his fastest, biggest, Joe had, uh, Joe was 12, I think, and then put him in there with a 15-year-old fixing to turn 16, big old fast boy, uh, and uh, that guy started laying a whooping on Joe, and the guy said, bam, and hit him uh, uh, in the, the lower part of the chest. I forget what you call this, but you got a sp space down here, a little bit down here. And he hit Joe there, and it uh, knocked the wind out of him. And Joe, Joe came back up and had a mean look on his face, and when he recouped, he went dead on the guy. And the guy was like, Jesus, boy's got heart. Oh, my God. You know, what the heck? And we knew then, hey, yeah, it's probably a good thing for you to do. And uh, the wife got a contract in another city, so we went there and uh, met one of the greatest guys. He still comes to this day in Hillspar, Joe. He's 160 pounds, but he's a Venezuelan badass. And uh, 
and he says the same thing. He's like, damn, there ain't nothing like Joe. I've been doing this 12 years and 11 years or whatever it is and winning championships and this and that. And he's, there ain't nobody his like this kid. So we, we know we need to stay, but, uh, you know, Joe's got beat up a bunch, a bunch of times. That's what you got to do to uh, survive in the sport. But you run up on somebody good, and they're, if they're laying a shellacking on you, it's supposed to motivate you to overcome them. And these kids aren't getting motivated no more. You got a baby and take baby steps with them, worry about the feelings and uh, are your feelings hurt or, well, we'll go over here to another place where you can be a superstar. And we're not, you know, that, how, you ain't going to be a superstar anywhere doing crap like that. Uh, and, you know, boxing's nothing to be doing unless you just want to uh, do boxing training and uh, maybe some lighter medium sparring because you enjoy it. Uh, but boxing's not to, you don't need to be in boxing to go down and be king of the gym. And uh, that be your ultimate thing because boxing takes too much out of someone. Uh, uh, and, you know, just getting hit in the head to be a king of a small building is nutsoid. It's just re crazy. So, but anyway, we, you know, I'm like, I'll pay these guys. And uh, what I would pay them would be five times, uh, sometimes 10 times. Uh, I, I offered to pay them for an hour and their transportation here and back. And, uh, uh, And they still want five, five or ten times what they'd normally get an hour, pay for the transportation, and they still won't come. You know, so everybody's too afraid to be shown up. And uh, we're just sitting here begging for somebody to come in here and show Joe up. Because uh, that's how you learn. You know, Joe's like, Dad, I hadn't had anybody in the past two years really even hit me hard that it affect me, you know. And Joe has to really restrain what he does, like with this boy last week. If you'll notice, he wasn't throwing uh, hard, stiff jabs. I don't even think he threw a jab at all. And he wasn't throwing right crosses. He was just throwing hooks and going to the body. Uh he knocked the boy's tooth right out onto the gym floor. And I mean, knocked the tooth out on the gym floor. And uh, he didn't want to hurt this guy. He's like, you know, got to go light on this guy so I can keep, keep him around. And, you know, that's just a sad shame. And this is going on everywhere. It's going, it's going on. Uh, you got champions that are getting in a squared circle, fighting for championships that uh, it would be running from this as well. And it ain't just here. I mean, it's everywhere. And, uh, and it's producing weak world champions. That's what it's producing. And we're getting what we're doing. Uh, the world's always rolled that way. Anyway, we hope you guys have a great rest of the week there were a lot of other things i was going to talk about but got off on this 30 minute tangent god bless my christian brothers and sisters and i would say i hope that my king uh blesses you my christian brothers and sisters and i would encourage everyone uh to get with my king the lord jesus christ